So this talk's really just to sort of um, introduce Open Learn Works. Um, over the last um, really 24 months, we had an opportunity with LabSpace that we had to move to Moodle, point, uh, Moodle 2, um, which gave us an opportunity to think about what was working on LabSpace, what wasn't working on LabSpace, um, and how we could improve it and take across um, the key elements that we know that our users were really engaging with. Um, for those of you who weren't familiar with Last Space, it was um, funded by the Hewlett Foundation and it was an area, it was part of the Open Learn project and it was a platform that was aimed at the academic community to remix and reuse content. Um, we have relaunched it as Open Learn Works. Um, it still has a lot of functionality that Last Space had. Um, but we like to think that we've improved it and we've made it simpler for people to use. Um, we're not there yet, there are still things that we are doing with it. Um, but what we have done that's been significantly different to last space is that we have focused on how we can support um, OER projects. Um, and the reason for that is we're looking for sustainable one for open learning ways because it is no longer a funded project, it is part of the core university um, provision that we have. Um, and one of our ways that we can really keep it going is by working with the large OER project um, to look at how we can develop it um, further. And I'll talk about that at the end, and Tim will be able to sort of mention a bit about it. And then now we're kind of at a stable point, and it's now live, and people can go and look at it, and it'll be indexed in Google, Google hopefully by the end of this month. Um, we can then start looking at how we support individuals and provide tools for individuals to access for free, so that if you have a small project, you have no funding, you've got a home you have an OER project. Um, so this is a kind of set some of the examples that we've had at the moment. Um, and we have two models, and I'm just going to very quickly flip through these. Um, this one is um, ignore the black bar because I've gone out to that illustration mode. When someone creates their own units, they don't need to talk to us, there's a function that they just go in and create a unit. They get a little bit of help text on how to get started. Um, and the lady at the top there has been doing some wikis and forums, and she's just created it at the moment. Um, this one is a project um, which is about rediscovering the night sky. Um, I've had nothing to do with it apart from set up a unit for them, and it's a collaboration with three or four different universities. And they're just using Moodle as is, and they're creating this big course which will go over, I think, towards the end of this year. These two projects on the other side, we've worked with the project owners. Um, the top one is a collaboration um, between the Uni Open University and Pembroke College um, for the London Language Centre. Um, and it's just using Moodle as is. We've just created local source pages and there's forums for the people involved in that project to communicate with. And now we've handed that site over to them. So I have absolutely nothing to do with this. And the two owners of the site manage it and upload it and do what they like with it. And then this one, um, this is a really interesting one, and this is here, this was the original Reflections Toolkit, which was done in conjunction with the Open University, and we used our production team, um, who did all the publishing, so it's using what we can structure content internally, but it, it's effectively like XML publishing. Um, so there's quite a lot of different capabilities and options you can do with the system. Um, and then we kind of have a bigger project, such as the Test India project, which I'll pass over to Tim, so he can sort of, he's been one of the first projects that's gone into Open Learn Works and has had to bear with us of um, really work, working in the site that's been developed alongside trying to create a project. Okay, um, I, will, I, will, I will not spend a lot of time on this because we were all being able to talk yesterday and all about this project, but we are a large, significant um, international development project, um, gifted funded um, around teacher education in, in, in India. So we will show us the next slide. Um, so what we've been doing is we've been creating OER for teacher educators. So we've been creating uh, what we're calling teacher development units. Um, and we used the open well, it was we were in the transition period, so we started using that space. Uh, but we used OER production systems to allow us to very quickly and easily um, get our content online for access globally. So it was a very structured way that we managed this. We managed it through the, through the system, and you can see that there on the, the right-hand side, um, something that would be you know, just sort of a basic on, so basic online course of like activity there. Um, and the idea was that we used lab space or open learning works as a very easy and quick way to get our stuff up there in a structured way, openly available, and um, uh, and meeting the accessibility guidelines as well. So that's it. 
Um, and the actually the Apple really developed our own website. So the idea was, the theory was, actually what we do is we use open work as a place to get content to them and give you them up quickly, allowing people to interact with them. Meanwhile, we can have our own site, and then as we become more sustainable, we start to migrate that content away, and it always has on our site. So at the moment, what we have is we have links out from our site into the open own work site. Um, through the development from that space for open mind works and through our interaction with the website it's become more evident that um, it's much more advantageous to us to actually probably host all of our learning content in open and works. So we originally saw it as a temporary repository if you like for content. Um, but I think we're moving a lot more now with the developments and the changes that happened um, in a way we're able to work with um, the open media unit. We've actually seen this potentially as a place that House on content uh, in the future, and the website itself has just been like a more social way for people to find information about the project. So, we have links to the website and we have some of the PDF versions as well on the website as well. So, that's kind of talked about <coughs> projects and what you can do in um, Open Land Works, and then the other side of Open Land Works that I think for us and people who have been involved in that space of Open Land Works was. How do we ensure that we are still part of the OER community and we give back? Because that was kind of sort of the original premise of when we were working on Open Learn. Um, so what we we've got under our getting started area is actually we don't we know that some people can't just go in there and create a unit and keep going. And they might be new to OERs, they might want to look at the community. So one of the areas we're really keen on working on over the next 12 months is how do we help build OER capabilities throughout the whole community? Um, and what we've created is this, this area that um, hope people grow and I've been speaking to Tim and then Dr. the job it's kind of about taking what was the school project and properly moving into Open Learn Works so it has a home because we have a commitment that Open Learn Works isn't going to disappear anytime soon because we're not linked to funding, we don't have a, a funding cut off so to speak. Um, but we've got somewhere that if you're new to OERs, and in fact even if you're engaged with OERs on a day to day basis that you can come to us um, and effectively we act as a springboard out to what else is going on in the community. So this area isn't about just the open learning works, this is about what the community is doing and where to find the information about developing your own skill set and hopefully share it on the term. So this is really in its infancy um, and there's quite a way to go with it and, uh, and part of why I'm hoping to be able to show the next sort of 12 months is really start making connections back out in the community because we've kind of been very in looking while we get into a state where the platform's been stable and we can launch it to everybody. So that's the other side of what's going on in Open Land Works that we hope to develop within the next 12 months is rebuilding the, the bridges and rebuilding the links to the community. Um, and this is the future in terms of um, our technical development, one of the things we are looking at the moment, and we are working with OU Wales and, um, and a consortium of other uh, Welsh colleges and officials. Um, we're being open and learn works, we're creating a portal um, to create Open Learn Wales, um, which will be completely in Welsh. Um, so we've been putting Welsh language packs into the system, um, which has been interesting and um, challenging, but I will probably um, help out that one. Um, and then the other things we're looking at is um, switching on badges for projects and how we facilitate um, non-OU projects, so how can you use badges. Um, we've already improved the search, if you use it now, I fully expect everybody to go, have you seen your search? We know we've got problems with the search, um, it's one of our priorities to look at, but there's lots of other internal issues and why we haven't dealt with it at the moment. Um, and, and other things we've improved Moodle quizzes, um, it is a Moodle platform, you can present courses in there. Um, we had OT12 do a MOOC a couple of years ago. Um, it's a nice platform for doing that, and then you're not constrained by things. Um, we're looking at how we can improve enrolment, we're looking at how we do data reporting. So these are the other things that we are thinking about for the future. Um, and that's just our contact details. Thank you very much for the time. We've got a couple of well, well, sort of questions that we've Anyone to go first? Okay. Yes, um, one of the things that's in the original iteration was the ability to download units to export to another platform. Is that? It will be, yeah, it's, it's not on at the moment. Um, this is one of the things Guy and I have been doing. Um, we're looking at um, improving the download uh, packages so that um, 
one of the things we've requested, and it's just caught in a lot of politics, that we would really like to be able to offer projects that they can do their own customised covers. So it becomes a, a much more, because one of the complaints about that space was it was lab space. And when you've got your own project, you kind of want to put your own fit and feel on it. So we, we, that's why it's not quite there at the moment. Um, but we're hoping, hopefully in the next few months, it will be switched back on. Four months years. Four months years. Individually, I've never done it. 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 I've never done yeah. Um, but just from a project perspective, you know, being able to have a PDF, a Word document, and some kind of XML or score type package for the key, the um, all scrubs because that allows it to be more flexible for taking it and remixing it in their own platforms. All the old formats of desktop has been on the part of all the technologies in, in the background, just because we to be launched. We've got about uh, eight different formats on the open learn and on the open learn website. So, so I should say at the moment, and one of the other things is, is rebuilding the connection between OpenLearn and OpenLearn Works. Um, we've had to kind of separate at the moment while we're getting OpenLearn Works staying with them. Any questions from anyone else at the audience? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've got sort of two theories and one quick one Tim. Um, is there any chance that there be any way that you can incorporate any mobile aspect to the um, potential future of it? And who would your ideal users be? And Tim, um, why is it that you think that it would be better for the project that Tassin needs to step? What would the main reasons that that uh, decision might happen? So on the first one, yes, we are hoping to make it mobile, optimise. Um, unfortunately, because we're part of the university, it, it, we're in a human system, I think that's the best way of describing it. Um, it is in the back of our minds, and certainly when we're talking about science now, we're thinking about what happens when it's properly mobile optimised. Um, in terms of users, it's a really interesting one um, because there's a, there's a starting thing about the the OER projects, and I use that kind of term fairly loosely. Of um, we're kind of aiming at very different audiences um, when we, we talk about projects. So we would like to attract some of the big projects because potentially they're the ones that will enable us to do some really interesting development that will then benefit the rest of the site. So the the OER world project has been really good for us because it, we've been able to do lots of incremental development that we just would not have been able to do had we not had that project come through the door. Um, by doing that, what I'm hoping it will do is it will enable a lot of the research projects to have a home that they can come and use um, because they, they're not going to be able to build their own platform or use other, other methods, um, which is why one of the things we're looking at is how do we support the, the tracking data so that if there is a research project, they can get meaningful data back out because that's going to be useful for them. Um, but we also don't want to alienate individual users who potentially academics who want to just try things out in a safe environment um, because, again, they've not got any other else they could do it. And it, it, it's just not it's another platform that people could use. I mean, we've got lots of other big sky, sort of blue sky thinking. And then the other side is for the projects, obviously, it's about the learner. Um, some of these projects, they are learner-focused. <coughs> What's the student experience for those people? Um, we're very fortunate because we can ride off the back of the only uses that uses Moodle as it's, it's BLE and open and work to do. We get quite a lot of stuff back off the back of there as well. So we've got quite a lot of range of use, which I know makes it kind of a bit of a I'm trying to get yeah, trying to aim at things. So we're, we're trying to sort of focus on here's the three groups and what does what do we need for the three groups, and which is why we focus on the big projects to start with, because actually they'll lead down to the other people. Okay, if you want to pull the question out, there's a big question, there's a big answer, and everyone else's question combined. So thanks, thanks for that. So a big hand throw question.